question we have the name of this compound okay name of p4 O10 is so for in order for us to name this we first have to identify what type of molecule this is okay is this going to be an ionic compound or molecular compound the way we figure this out is by going to the periodic table and seeing what phosphorus and oxygen are so we have phosphorus and oxygen okay so that is all the way here. So we have phosphorus here, element 15, and oxygen here, element 8. And they're both listed based on the color coding as reactive non-metals. So in this compound, we have no metals. So it's not an ionic compound because that needs a metal and a non-metal. It's actually going to be a molecular compound. With that being said, it follows all naming rules. Because it's a molecular compound, we still need um, phosphorus, okay? And then we need the oxygen. But here, instead of it being oxygen, we still follow the rules where we drop the ending and add the ide, okay? That's very important. But now where it differs from ionic compound naming, is you actually have to indicate how many of the um, atoms you have in there based on the prefixes. So for example, 10 would be deca. So this would be deca oxide. Okay. That's 10, I believe, because that's non deca. Yeah. And then four is tetra. Okay. So we have tetra phosphorus deca oxide. That's the key there in terms of naming these is that you have to make sure you account for the actual um, amount of, I guess, atoms you have. And we use that by remembering our naming. So we have, for example, mono, bi, tri, tetra, penta, um, hexa, hepta. Um, octa, um, let's see, what else is there? Nana and Deca. And each one of them is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, respectively. Okay? And that's how we're able to get this name here. With that being said, based on our choices, phosphorus oxide would be assuming that it was like an ionic compound, which is not tetraphosphorus deca oxide. That is what we want, so we can say the answer is B. And as you can see here, C um, only accounts for the first part, but you still need to be able to identify how many of the second part you have. And D, same thing, okay? If phosphorus was just P by itself, then you wouldn't need, you don't typically see the mono in the first one. Um, like, for example, a good example of dihydrogen monoxide, where you actually have, you know, two water, I mean, two hydrogens and one oxide but then when you have like a nitrogen dioxide you rarely hear mono nitrogen dioxide you just say nitrogen dioxide um with that being said though phosphorus deca oxide is wrong because it ignores that it has four phosphorus there so the only answer is b tetraphosphorus deca oxide Okay, so now is one of the question number 15 here.